On Wednesday the 7th of October 1992, Rihanna Barrow was home alone as she often was during the school holidays. Reportedly, she had decided to visit Southgate Shopping Centre at Renal, which was approximately 5 kilometres away, to purchase a Christmas card for her pen pal who resided in America. Whilst she usually would have been able to take the bus to the shopping centre, on this day there had been a bus driver strike and as a result she would have had to walk. Rihanna was seen at approximately 10.30am walking towards the Renella news agency. It is confirmed that she arrived at this news agency and purchased a Christmas card at 11.19am. She was then seen at approximately 12.30pm on Highway Drive which was situated between the Morford Vale High School and Stancap Primary School. This is the last confirmed sighting of her. It is believed, however, that Rihanna did make it home, as the card she had previously purchased was found on the dining room table. Despite this, it is unknown what time she arrived home, or more importantly, what happened following her arrival. Her mother Paula would arrive home from work at 4pm to find the house empty and Rihanna nowhere to be found. A report alleges that Paula returned to find the front door locked, the TV on, and a vinyl record on the living room floor. It is also reported that she attempted to call around to friends and family to see if anybody knew where the young girl was, as well as knocking on doors of neighbours to see if they knew or saw anything. This unfortunately led nowhere. As well as that, her elder brother was also not home all day, so he could not provide any additional information. Paula subsequently phoned the police and an investigation quickly ensued. From the very beginning, there was very little to go on, but the police did theorise that Rihanna had been taken from her home. This was supported by the fact that none of her personal belongings had been taken, suggesting that she had not planned to leave. The police appealed heavily to the public for assistance, so much so that by November 5th, they had over 1,600 tips. There was one apparent sighting of the young girl in Acre Avenue, but that was later determined to be not Rihanna. Extensive and thorough searches were conducted, including through bushland and rubbish bins, however these would prove fruitless. Eventually, the police received the tip-off that Rihanna was being held hostage in an apartment. The police raided the building, but unfortunately no trace of the young girl was ever found. Later, they believed they were on the right track when it came to light that there was a sighting of a suspicious white car with Victorian number plates near where Rihanna had disappeared. However, this ultimately led the police nowhere. Despite this, there was another avenue to be explored. Mr. Cruel. Mr. Cruel was an assailant who abducted and sexually assaulted three young girls from 1987 to 1991. His victims were 10-year-old Sean Wills, 13-year-old Nicola Linus, and 13-year-old Carmen Chan. Sharon and Nicola were taken from their homes in Melbourne and brought to a location where they were held and disgustingly assaulted. Thankfully, they would be released after. Carmen Chan, however, was not as lucky, and was tragically found murdered several months after she had been abducted. These cases have never been solved. The connection between Mr. Cruel and Rihanna was that it appeared that the young girl had been taken from her home in a similar fashion to the other victims, although not many other connections have been found or confirmed. Later, an unusual development emerged. The police got a call from a man who said he had found a set of keys on High Rate Drive, only a few hundred metres from Rihanna's home. Interestingly, these keys matched the description of the keys Rihanna would have had on her person at the time she disappeared. The man had called the police from a payphone that was across the road, however when he returned it appeared that the keys had vanished. This lead, however, brought the police no further to solving Rihanna's disappearance. And, as it stands, the case remains open and unsolved. If alive today, Rihanna would be 42 years old. There still remains an offer of 1 million Australian dollars for anyone who can either provide information leading to the recovery of her remains or information leading to a conviction in the case. Rihanna Barrow was a young girl with a bright future ahead of her, but it appears that that has all been tragically snatched away. Please, if you know anything about this case, Contact Crime Stoppers on 1-800-333-000 or visit www.crimestoppersa.com.au. It is estimated that around 30,000 people are reported missing in Australia every year. That's about one person every 18 minutes. 
and although nearly all of those reported missing are found, there are still some who are never found. The families of those people suffer greatly, not knowing what has befallen their loved ones. If you have any information regarding any disappearances in Australia, please contact Crime Stoppers via the links in my description. I hope that one day we can lower the number of unsolved disappearances to zero, or at least get very close to it. A sentiment I think we can all understand and echo is that said by Alan Arthur, the former lead investigator on this case. There is a terrible thing that happens with crimes against the person. For those that are dead and the body is found, there is some sort of closure that can be made. But in the case of Rihanna Barrow and others like her, she's disappeared without a trace. Thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Stay safe and be well. This has been Philo 5 Declassified. I'll catch you in the next one.